Hi, this is Alfred with Crest, and I've got another video here for you. So the other day, so I saw this on social media. Someone was asking how to draw this closet inside this room. And the reason they were asking is because when you create that closet there, it gets rid of that area up above the closet. So it's hard to, to get the square footage of that bigger room, we'll call it a family room, to include that area above the closet. So let's take a look and, and see how we're, how we're going to do that. And we're going to do it in a couple of different situations. We're going to do it with an easy situation where the ceiling above that closet is a flat ceiling. And then we're going to complicate it a little bit and we're going to make that a slope ceiling. But we're going to keep the, clo the closet ceiling flat. So let's go ahead and get started. So I started out here with a family room that's 17 by 16 for, for, for no particular reason. I just picked a decent sized room there. And it's got an 8 foot ceiling here. We'll go into 3D for... A minute just so you can see there's nothing special about that room so what we're going to do now is we're going to create that closet over here i'm just going to break click and drag and i'm going to hold down the control key and pull that over and just to make it simple i'm going to make that closet five feet come out five feet and then we're also going to make it five feet wide there on that side so now we have and i'm just doing that to make you know just to make things simple five by five there and those are outside dimensions in that closet. So now let's say that that closet again has a, uh, let me go ahead and rename it here. And you can see it's got an eight foot ceiling height, but we're going to take this family room here and we're going to make that a 12 foot ceiling height. So now if I go into 3D, you can see it got rid of that area above the closet, which is what sort of led to the question here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this closet and I'm going to just copy and paste it out here somewhere. And now let's start creating that area above the closet. So let's come over here. I'm just going to area call it area above CL for closet. And then if that closet has got an 8-foot ceiling height on it, then the, the top of that closet should be around 8-foot 4 if it's a 4-inch wall above it. So we're going to change the floor height here to 8 foot 4 above the other floor. And then we're going to change our ceiling height to 3 foot 8 because 8 foot 4 and 3 foot 8 would get us to our 12 feet. So now our ceiling should match be in the same place. Let's take a look at that in 3D. There we go. So now you can see that block would sort of fit right in there. And one of the things, well, first let's go ahead and uh, delete these three walls here. And if you don't know how to do that, I'm just holding down the control key and clicking on the three walls. That way I can delete all three of them at the same time. So if I delete my three walls there, go into 3D, you can see here I got rid of those walls, but I got this little piece down here. And that's because by default, Xactimate extends the walls down a foot. So let's go ahead and fix that first. I'm going to double click on this wall here, and you can see right here, extend exterior surfaces. I'm going to say no. And that will get rid of that piece right there. So now my little area is looking like it's going to fit in there. But notice that even though the closet is 8 feet tall, that the walls, because they're shared walls with the family room, they're not. So we need to lower these walls. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take this wall and this wall and this wall and we're going to go into the properties and we're going to say missing end to end here yes and the only reason we're doing that is because it's going to give us two more lines that we really need so when i hit enter here you notice i got a couple more lines here so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to change this thickness back to four and then my opening base height would be eight foot four right because it's eight foot to the ceiling but the walls on the outside are going to go up four more inches so eight foot four and I actually we also need to do that to this wall I should have thought of that but otherwise we're going to get two walls together there and we don't want that so let's oops let's go ahead and just pick that wall again missing end to end four inch thick eight foot four there we go now let's see what it looks like there we go that looks like that'll fit right in there and that floor is going to be the ceiling of this right here 
And again, we made these four walls here, eight foot four, because that's where that basically that platform or that floor is going to be sitting right on top of there. So you've got a ceiling height of eight feet, another four inches. We're at eight foot four. So let's go back to plan view. And next, we're going to take the area above the closet and we're going to make it a subgroup of the family room. There we go. Now, whatever you do in this family room, you're going to be doing in this area above the closet. So, for example, if I paint the walls in this family room, it's also going to paint this wall right here. You can see how when I hover over the family room, it shows it turning blue along with the area above the closet. So I can paint all the walls here and not have to do two estimates or basically estimate in two rooms. And the last thing we're going to do before we complicate things, you'll notice here my dimensions changed when I deleted those three walls because basically it's measuring to a a different place, uh, the middle of the wall. So we're going to go ahead and stretch this out to five by five. So that area fits right over that top of that closet. Okay, so we're ready to complicate things now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, this family room a slope ceiling. So we're going to say this is the low point here and it's sloping up in this direction. So we got 12 foot height here and let's say 16 here. And so obviously this room above is also going to do the same thing, but our closet is going to stay a flat ceiling. So let's come, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on that family room. And I'm going to make it a slope ceiling. And we're going to say 12 to 16. And we're going to slope it in this direction here. So that that's our low point. Notice the arrow pointing. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to change this to a slope ceiling. And we don't really know what this tall wall is. We know our short wall is still three foot eight. Oh, we haven't uh, changed the direction yet. So let's change the direction. Click on the orientation button. Click over here. And now if we go into 3D, you'll notice that that slope is not correct. It's too steep. So we need to figure out the distance from here to the ceiling. And if you knew how you were going to draw it, you hopefully would have had the forethought to, you know, normally you'd measure here, shoot up, shoot your laser measuring device up. You'd see that it's 12 there, that it's 16 here. And you probably didn't think to do it here. If you did, that's great because we'd be essentially be done. You'd take that dimension right there, subtract the eight foot four and whatever's left over is the distance from this floor to the slope on that ceiling. So if you knew that, then we'd be done. But let's say that you forgot to do that and you need to figure that out. Now, if you're good at math, you can figure it out mathematically. Uh, I was pretty good at math as a kid, but not everybody likes math. And I even like trigonometry so I could figure it out with sines and cosines, but uh, not everybody's a... Uh, uh, nutty enough to, to like trigonometry that much. So we're going to do it a couple of different ways. And one way, you don't need math to figure it out. So if you want to do it mathematically, because your, your math is pretty good, what you could do, let me move this over here a little bit, shrink it. Go into three. So, so what you would do is you would say this distance here is 17 and this is four, right? It goes from four, from 12 to 16. So the formula to figure out, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what this dimension is at the end of that closet. So the way you would do that, and, and pardon my bad numbering here, you would say 17 is to 4 as 5 is to what we're looking for. So 17 is to 4 as five is to this dimension we're looking for. Then you just kind of multiply them and crisscross them and you're going to say 17x is equal to four times five, which is 20. Then you're going to get rid of that 17 by moving it over here and dividing. And x, which is what we're looking for, is one point. I'm going to do it on my calculator here is 1.1765, which is about one foot two and a little bit. Okay, so that should be one foot two and a little bit. But if you don't know, if you're not good at math and you don't want to do it that way, there's an easy way to do it. So here's what we're going to do. Go back to plan view. 
And I want to put another room here. And I'm going to stretch it out 17 feet. And it's already 12 feet tall on one end. So what I need to do is I need to make this side here 16 feet tall. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to grab that diamond right there. And I want to make it 16 feet tall right there. So now I'm going to create another room down here to simulate the closet. And that closet's 8 feet tall. So what I'm looking for here is at 5 feet what this dimension is here. And I need it from this, from the top of that wall there, because that would be the top of the closet. So now, this room here, this closet is five feet in length on the outside, right there. So I want to put a wall right here above just to give me that dimension. And normally when you create a wall using this wall tool here, you're going to put it in the middle of the wall. So instead of at five feet, we're going to go to four foot ten. So I'm going to hit Shift W, which is my shortcut for the wall tool. I'm going to go to 4 foot 10. I'm left click, I'm going to go straight up. And there's the dimension I need right there, 4 foot 10. So I'm going from 3 foot 8 to 4 foot 10. And what is that? That happens to be 1 foot 2. So my math worked out, and I've just confirmed it with this right here. So now that I know that tall wall should be 4 foot 10, I'm going to delete that, bring this back. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say I should go from three foot eight to four foot ten. Now those ceilings should be right. See that? How oh, they're at the same ankle and they're they're correct. So that's a couple of ways of, of figuring out your dimension basically from the top of the closet here to the ceiling right above it. But like I said, once you know that this is how you draw this, or if you agree this is the best way to draw it, then you can just shoot your laser measuring device from there up and then subtract the 8 foot 4. And then you don't have to go through that exercise. So now I'm going to come out of full screen here. And I'm going to drop in a couple of items in there graphically so you can see how this uh, works. So let's say I want to seal and paint the walls in that family room. And I want to include that area above the closet and since I made it a subgroup it should so I'm just going to come up here and I want to type in PNTSP seal and paint and notice the default is is walls and ceilings so I mean I could come over here and find a place where it'll do all my walls that, that's part of graphic estimating um, if you don't know how to do that then you should sign up for my class but anyway so what we're going to do is I, to, just to make it easier I'm going to right click right here and change my default to a W. So I'm only doing the walls. Then it doesn't really matter where I click. So notice now if I click right here, I want to get all the walls in that family room. Notice how all my walls are done, but it also did that wall right here uh, in that area above the ceiling. But what if I wanted to do the floor of that area above the ceiling also? If I right click right here and I change this to floor, it's not going to let me do it. And normally this does work, but for some reason in this case it doesn't. And I know it's not going to work because see how I got my trash can with a red arrow? So if I click there, it's going to undo my wall. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit escape. And then I'm come, going to come down here behind my calculation W. And I'm going to put plus F1, which is the floor of subgroup number one. And that's how you use variables. And if you don't know how to use variables, um, you really should take my class because that's that makes your life so easy when it comes to the math. So basically, I'm doing all the walls plus, plus the floor of that of that area above the ceiling there. So if I go into 3D, let's get rid of this so we can see inside the room there. We basically did all these walls. We did this wall, and then we did the floor here. So let's say that you wanted to paint the ceiling one coat. PNTP is one coat. I'm just going to right click to make my life easy. I want to change that default to ceiling so that I can click anywhere. And it's going to do just the ceiling of both the area of the family room and also the area above the closet. And that's how you can draw that closet in that family room. Dropped a couple of items in there to show you how well it would work. And again, you could draw this on a second floor, lower the elevation and bring it down. And it'll look good in 3D, but then you can't estimate the two rooms at once. You'd have to estimate them as two separate rooms, one on the first floor and one on the second floor. And the reason is because you can't make a room on the second floor a subgroup of a room on the first floor. You just can't do it. So that's why you do them both on one floor.
I just think it's much easier this way. But anyway, hopefully I didn't complicate this too much. I tried to keep it simple. I think we're going to end it right there. We'll see you at the next video. Well, that's the end of the video. If you like this video, give it the old thumbs up. I think it's down here somewhere. Or even better, subscribe so that you get to see any of the future videos that I post on here. Have a great day. We'll see you at the next video.